when we look out into the vast, expansive, awe-inspiring cosmos, there are innumerable stars out there. Yet, one of them dominates our sky and our lives, burning brightly and ferociously at the center of our solar system, the Sun. It's easy to see how generations of humans before us were inspired to create all kinds of legends to explain its mesmerizing glow. Now, as technology has advanced beyond the realms of their wildest imaginations, we can delve into the processes within and around our neighboring yellow dwarf, going deeper than ever before. As we journey through its ferocious atmosphere, what do you think awaits us there? If it were up to you, which fascinating phenomenon about the sun would you want to discover first? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below. Hello everyone. In this video, I want to dive into the sun, drawing on different wavelengths of electromagnetic energy to showcase this star in a completely new light. Previously, we explored Jupiter and some of its moons through the lens of the electromagnetic spectrum. You can check out that video here. Today, we'll be revisiting this approach, but instead of a planet, we'll be focusing on a highly energetic ball of plasma. What's fascinating is that the light we see from the sun is actually quite old. Although light is the fastest thing we know, the image of the sun that we see from Earth is approximately 8 minutes and 20 seconds old, which means we're always observing the sun a few minutes in the past. And if you count how long it takes the photons generated within the sun's core to make their way through each layer before escaping into space, the light that reaches us can be anywhere from 10,000 to 170,000 years old. Isn't that amazing? Where to begin? Like eating a fruit by starting with the outer layers and working your way in. Let's start our investigation with the outermost layer of the sun's atmosphere, the corona. The following image was taken by the Solar Dynamics Observatory Satellite, or SDO a NASA space mission launched back in February 2010. SDO was designed to better understand the solar variations that influence life on Earth and our technological systems. By studying the dynamic solar surface and atmosphere at different electromagnetic wavelengths. By looking at light beyond the visible range, NASA was able to pick out normally invisible details that are crucial to our understanding of the Sun. This image was captured using a 19.3 nanometer wavelength, representing light found in the extreme ultraviolet region, at a wavelength corresponding to a color temperature of about 1 million Kelvin. We can clearly see the higher region of the Sun's corona. Have you ever heard of the solar corona? Interestingly, the sun's corona can also be seen by the naked eye on rare occasions, such as during a total solar eclipse. When the moon is perfectly aligned between the Earth and the sun for a fleeting moment, the view of the central, brighter disk, known as the photosphere, is fully blocked, revealing a radiant outer layer. While this is already a breathtaking sight, the corona seen with the naked eye is still nowhere near as detailed as in this image taken by the SDO. This makes SDO an incredibly useful tool for scientists' studies. Let's go a little deeper now, to the features of the sun just beneath the corona. At a color temperature of 20 million Kelvin, the intensely vivid spots indicate events known as solar flares. Here is some footage of a particularly busy week for flares, back in August 2022. I've always found solar flares to be both terrifying and hypnotizing. They are colossal explosions, where the sun spews out an immense amount of electromagnetic radiation. They are caused when magnetic fields cross, distort, and rapidly reorganize themselves. This activity is created by the turbulent nature of the plasma within the sun itself, from which the fields ultimately originate. But solar flares, 
aren't the only features of the sun's atmosphere venting radiation. Coronal holes, indicated here by this darker region on the sun, are another fascinating feature. We'll take a closer look at using extreme ultraviolet light. Coronal holes are areas of cooler, less dense plasma which are magnetically open, meaning that instead of forming closed loops that return to the sun's surface, the field lines travel outward across the solar system. These areas allow solar wind particles to escape more easily into space. When these solar winds are directed toward and collide with the Earth's magnetosphere, beautiful aurora lights dance across the night sky at the Earth's polar regions. Using ultraviolet light gives us a much better view of these fascinating features in the sun's outer layers. Non-visible spectrum light is an incredible tool, and there are so many different features in the sun's outer layers to look at. There are solar filaments, also known as solar prominences, the large loops of plasma that rise from the sun's surface. These enormous loops are large enough to make the Earth look like a tiny speck and can stretch hundreds of thousands of kilometers into space. They can form in as little time as a day, but a stable prominence can remain in the corona for several months. In this example, we watch as a prominence snakes its way out of the photosphere and into the sun's atmosphere. Although this video is sped up so that minutes seem like seconds, when you consider the sheer size of the prominence, it becomes clear just how swiftly the sun's intense magnetic fields are causing this material to move. One fact you might not know about the sun's atmosphere is that sometimes it rains there. Not all of the charged plasma fired into the sun's corona continues out across the solar system. Some of it remains trapped in the corona, cooling down, until it falls back to the sun's surface as a shining rain. This coronal rain is beautiful to look at, but is best observed from a distance, since it's still millions of degrees in temperature. Of course, Falling gently back to the sun's surface is only the fate of some of the sun's plasma. This is where the comparison to Earth fails. After all, on Earth the clouds don't crack open like a released elastic band, firing into space. But on the sun, thanks to tightly wound magnetic fields, that's exactly what happens. Here's a time lapse of a coronal mass ejection. Watch as the structure forms at the bottom left of the sun for some time before eventually snapping and sending billions of tons of plasma out across the solar system. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to support the channel. Even with the Earth's magnetic field, being hit by a powerful one of these could be devastating for our satellites and electrical grids. All these structures are imaged by the SDO here, utilizing a 30 nanometer wavelength of light, which corresponds to the extreme ultraviolet portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. Timing is important when trying to image these features, as they are more common in certain years than others. In fact, each structure depends on the sun's solar activity, alternating around an 11-year solar cycle. I actually just did a video about this right here, but there's even more to learn. Just as using visible and ultraviolet light shows us different things, when looking at the same feature, using two different wavelengths of non-visible light can also be eye-opening. To demonstrate this, take a look at these two images of the sun's corona. Taken over the same time period, the following two images use two different wavelengths of light. The first, imaged at a color temperature of 600,000 Kelvin, depicts the quiet corona and features coronal loops. The second, imaged at a color temperature of 2 million Kelvin, displays the much hotter active regions of the corona. The stark comparison between the two images highlights the importance of using different approaches when investigating the star. What may at first appear to be a singular solar phenomenon can actually be revealed as a complex, intertwined chain of events. And technically, we still haven't made it all the way through the sun's atmosphere yet. Moving further inwards, let's look at another image produced by the SDO, utilizing a 160 nanometer wavelength of light. This time, 
It's of the sun's transition region. The transition region is a layer which sits between the sun's corona and the chromosphere, the lowest layer of the sun's atmosphere. It's a very shallow layer, approximately 100 kilometers in thickness. In this region, the thermal temperature of the sun rises dramatically from around 8,000 to 500,000 Kelvin. For an earthly comparison, fiercely scalding lava erupting from Kalawea in Hawaii is 1,170 degrees Celsius, or 1,443 Kelvin. At the lower, deeper end of the transition region, the temperature is almost six times hotter than this. At the upper end of the transition region, the temperature is more than 346 times hotter. Traveling even deeper, we find ourselves immersed in the sun's chromosphere, which is the last layer of atmosphere before we reach the sun's surface itself. The chromosphere was imaged here using ultraviolet light with a wavelength of 170 nanometers and is estimated to be about 1,700 kilometers thick. When observing the chromosphere closely, we can easily recognize fascinating phenomena called spicules. They sway like long blades of grass blown by the wind, are long streams of plasma shooting straight up from the surface of the sun at speeds of up to 100 kilometers per second, about 282 times faster than the speed of sound, and can reach a length of nearly 10 kilometers, which is more than one kilometer higher than Mount Everest. These structures only form and disappear within five to 10 minutes. And for a long time, scientists have hotly debated the mechanism of their formation because no one knows why charged particles can escape the strong magnetic field of the sun at this depth. That is until 2017, when a team of scientists working on an extremely detailed model of the spicules discovered that their origins must be related to neutral particles. Scientists had not originally included neutral particles in their models of the sun, as they didn't think they affected the motion of the magnetically charged particles. But once they were added, it transpired that the neutral particles gave the magnetically charged particles the unexpected buoyancy they needed to escape the sun's plasma and shoot up into spicules. Descending further through the sun's lower atmosphere, we eventually reach the photosphere, the surface of the sun itself, which is best imaged using visible light. While the edge of the photosphere appears sharp and precise, as it often does to our naked eye, this is simply due to how far away the sun is. The sun itself is not solid at all. Since it is too hot for matter to exist in a solid, liquid or gas state in any region of the sun, it can only be plasma, referred to as the fourth state of matter, and estimated to make up 99.9% .9 of all the matter in the universe. Plasmas tend to behave a lot like gases, except they are made up of a mixture of ionized atoms and free electrons. The photosphere is the outermost layer in this image, around 400 kilometers thick. It is not a fixed, solid boundary of the sun, unlike what the image may suggest. It's just a transitional zone. And sadly, it is the deepest layer of the star that scientists can measure directly. On closer inspection, you may notice some dark spots on the left-hand side. These are known as sunspots and appear darker than other parts of the photosphere due to their cooler temperatures, but that's only in comparison to their scorching hot surroundings. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Unlike coronal holes, Sunspots form in areas where magnetic fields are particularly powerful. Here, heat becomes trapped beneath the photosphere due to decreased convection within these areas. When comparing this image of the sun to a previous one taken using extreme ultraviolet light over the same period, a connection between sunspots and solar flares emerges. The captivating solar flares and sunspots coincide at the same location, from peering beneath the surface, it becomes clear that one must lead to the other. Now, 
Let's take a closer look at some similar sunspots. This image was taken using the Swedish Solar Telescope, based here on Earth, and using a wavelength of visible light of approximately 400 nanometers. Next to and surrounding the sunspots, the photosphere is saturated with these jagged-edged, endlessly shape-shifting cells, which don't look dissimilar to lava as it cools and cracks. However, these cells are around 1,000 kilometers wide and are known as solar granules. Think of them as the very top layer of a churning convection cell beneath. Brighter areas inside each granule represent fluid of unimaginable temperatures rising up from within the sun's upper interior layer to its surface. Upon reaching this boundary, the fluid has nowhere else to go except to spread outward and across. After gradually cooling, the fluid sinks back inwards via the rough, dark boundaries surrounding each cell, before repeating the cycle. This process closely resembles the convection currents within Earth's mantle, which drive plate tectonics. This is no small matter. On average, it is estimated that each granule lasts for as little as 20 minutes, but the flow within these cells reaches supersonic speeds of more than 7 kilometers per second, generating waves on the sun's surface due to sonic booms. Fascinatingly, these granules can also be seen in the full disk view we saw earlier, utilizing the same wavelength of visible light. You might think that this image looks rather grainy for such a high-tech space probe, and you'd be right. That graininess is actually the granules on the sun's photosphere, not a processing effect or excess noise in the image. And that's it. Sadly, our journey ends here, as scientists have not yet figured out how to image deeper into the sun, using either visible or non-visible light. Much of what lies beyond this layer remains shrouded in mystery. But we can see the benefits of using light of all different spectrums in our study of the sun. They help us observe exploding solar flares, vast coronal holes, swaying spicules, intriguing sunspots, and shape-shifting cells, just to name a few, in completely new ways. The sun is always the center of vibrant motion, and it's hard to imagine how many wonders would remain forever hidden from us without the help of advanced observation technology. Perhaps one day, humanity will invent new methods that allow us to see even deeper into this brilliant star, using techniques that are unimaginable to us right now, just as our ancestors never dreamed of the achievements we enjoy today. Even so, Simply knowing that the universe still holds countless mysteries yet to be deciphered, and that we are gradually uncovering them, is enough to ignite endless curiosity and excitement within me. Who knows what incredible secrets are still waiting to be discovered beyond those searing layers. Thank you for joining me on this journey to explore the secrets of the sun and the vast universe. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss any of the next adventures. Feel free to share your thoughts here and questions or personal experiences with astronomical phenomena in the comments below. Once again, sincere thanks and see you in upcoming videos. Wishing you a radiant and inspiring day.